Guys, what is happening? Welcome to my channel, Chef's News. So I'm going to be keeping you up to date on everything that's happening in the hospitality world. Maybe not everything, as much as I can within London, which is a big hotspot. I'm going to be giving you some tips and tricks to become a better chef at home and a better chef at work if you are a chef. I'm going to be sharing some reviews on products that I have used, uh, that I would maybe like to use, that I'm buying. Uh, some reviews on books that I've read that have made me a better chef and grown my knowledge of uh, the culinary world. And also some travel tips and food tips, things that I've tried that I enjoy that I will go back to and I recommend to anyone. So without further ado, welcome to my channel. what is happening welcome to chef's news today's topics we're going to cover some covid related uh, some government guidelines that have been coming out things that are going to be affecting us in the kitchen affecting you as guests maybe i'm um, going to be covering some of the rules and regulations that are going to change that are going to affect people at work now i'm also going to cover some restaurants that have unfortunately closed uh, we won't be seeing them again how this might affect the market First on the topic, big news, massive news for both guests and for, uh, for chefs, for waiters, for anyone running a restaurant. We've got uh, new rules and regulations restricting the service of food or guests in the building between 10pm and 5am. Big blow to some, some places including hotels. They are not allowed to serve guests in a restaurant environment stand up, sit down, drinking, whatever it may be, between the times of 10 p.m. and 5 a.m. Uh, for some smaller businesses, I'm sure this is not going to be too much of an issue, but this is where it carries over to the next, the next key point, is that every single person working will have to wear a mask. Uh, so, going to be a bit uncomfortable, maybe feel like uh, Hannibal Lecter or something is serving you, I don't know. Uh, a bit scary for some, but if you want to eat in a nice restaurant or whatever, to have a nice evening, nothing's going to stop anyone. Now, each guest will be legally required to fill out any track and trace forms that a restaurant supplies. And table bookings is a maximum of six people. So six people can uh, book one table at a time. Any bigger, there has to be a separate booking with absolutely no chance that they can combine to make one big table. Some of the rules change up uh, in north of UK where uh, children under the age of 12 do not uh, count as one of these six. Now for people not wearing masks or caught not wearing masks, breaking the law, it's going to be a £200 on the, on the spot fine. Uh, it's going to be a £1,000 fine for restaurant owners and operators if uh, someone's caught not wearing a mask. And for repeat offenders, that will blow up to a £4,000 fine. So you imagine, guys, maybe one restaurant doesn't even earn £4,000 in a day. It's going to be a big, uh, a big risk to take if you're not going to wear a mask. Now, at the end of this month, we're going to see the end of the furlough scheme. So a lot of people are still on furlough. Uh, this will be the last month that they can be not working and actually receive any benefits. Uh, the Chancellor has announced that a job, the job retention scheme will be replaced with the job support scheme. Uh, this will be a six month sub program to replace the job retention scheme. Uh, employees must work a minimum of 33% of their contracted hours. I'll come back to this point in a minute. Uh, the remaining hours not work, the government will pay thir one third of their wages each employee only able to work 33%, uh, meaning they will receive 77% of their pay. This will be capped at £679.92, so £700 a month. I'm guessing that this is capped uh, by the government and then your employer can pay you more. Now, the point I wanted to come back to is I've heard a lot of employers have rewritten the contracts for their staff, uh, supplying them with a zero hour contract. This is a bit of a gray area for me because if one of my staff members is on a zero hour contract 
and the job uh, support scheme saying that they need to work 33% of their hours, 33% of zero is zero. So do they fall under this category that maybe they can receive any kind of benefits? So maybe it's even better for them to be unemployed to receive some kind of benefit. I don't know guys, it's a bit of a grey area, I need to do some more research, uh, if anyone has any more information about this, please send it on through. The Chancellor has also announced that he will unveil plans to extend business support loans over until November. Now the some of the loans were ending in November and his current, the, the government has currently already loaned from March 53 billion pounds. So I'm really hoping that this will support some more businesses and get them through until uh, the, the Christmas period where they can finally open up and look at making some more money to keep the doors open, to keep jobs uh, and happy guests. Personally, I've had a lot of chefs reach out to me that I've worked with previous looking for jobs, looking for extra hours maybe. Um, so some advice that I've given to them and that I'll give you guys too is be proactive in what you're doing. Now, sitting at home and sending CVs is great, but if you consider my, on my end, I had one job advert out uh, for a CDP. In a 24-hour period, we had something like 200 plus applicants, and that was uh, on not a mainstream like Indeed or Caterer.com. So you, you consider us an employer, I'm not going to go through 300 CVs and individually message and say, look, yes, no, yes, no, no. Sorry guys, I, do, I don't have time. So be proactive, write a CV, write a nice CV, print it out, pack your chef whites, clean chef whites, please guys, come on. Pack your knives, pack your shoes, pack everything you need to work a shift hand out your resume with the intention of working that day. Look for places anywhere that is close to you. Maybe you don't want to travel anymore. Look for places that are in walking distance. Apply for those restaurants, see what they need. Offer to do a trial right then and there. Cut the middleman, that's it. Increase your chances of finding a job. Now this applies to anyone. Maybe you're a waiter, <clears throat> maybe you're a manager. If you have the skills to manage a restaurant, you have the skills to manage so many different things. You are not restricted to the hospitality industry in terms of a restaurant or a cafe or a bar. Open, open your horizons. Maybe it's for a six month period until this closes, but guys, be, be proactive and don't rely on someone else to give you a job. Uh, and be motivated because there are jobs out there. I know people are looking for, uh, looking for stuff. So. And I wish you guys all the best. Recently, uh, it, since March, I've seen in the headlines lots and lots and lots, even high street uh, hospitality places, uh, hospitality venues, closing, closing sites, closing portions of the business, reducing the work hours. So some of the hardest hits this month, uh, some big names like Oaxaca. Now they have closed, previously closed 10 of its sites and they're, uh, company voluntary agreement has been approved. So 10 of those sites, potentially 10 of those sites have lost all of their staff, including management. Uh, I really pray for them and hope that they're doing well. Another big name that's been ha had a fatal blow is Pizza Express. Uh, 73 of its restaurants around the UK have been closed with a, a totaling of 1,100 jobs put at risk. So I'm not sure, it hasn't been advertised if they have got rid of these guys, uh, but it, it's a massive blow to the industry guys and, and putting a lot of people in a very, very tough place. So since March, uh, 22,000 jobs have been lost. So all of those people are probably seeking employment. Now this is pretty doom and gloom, but Keep in mind there's a lot of restaurants opening. People are taking opportunity of the situation to open their first restaurant. Keep an eye out, read the news, see if they need guests. People are excited to get out. My restaurant has been busy, we're picking up. So there's gonna be jobs available. It's not all doom and gloom and I, I wish you all the best in the, in the meantime. Now a special mention is Andrew Wong's city restaurant, Kim. I never managed to get there. I was really excited about this. He was doing some really cool traditional Chinese techniques, cooking uh, 
it's a shame I never got to go there. I don't even think it made two years. Uh, the pressure was just too much and I can imagine with a nice uh, high-end restaurant trying to open the financials aren't smooth for the first year maybe even two years until you get on your feet uh, and it's a real shame and I hope that Andrew continues to pursue the passion I know that they have another restaurant uh, and I, I hope to see another restaurant of its kind opening in the near future and I'm sorry for your loss Hey guys, that pretty much wraps everything up for this week. Uh, I want to cover some more tips and tricks, uh, go over a few more important information. So if you like this video, I'd like you to click down the bottom on subscribe, turn on the notifications, and I continue to uh, make some more videos for you guys to enjoy. Thank you very much. See ya.